Hey, what's up guys? This is the new Eero Pro 6e. It is a tri-band mesh Wi-Fi 6e system. So it's the first Wi-Fi 6e router that Eero came out with and together they act as a mesh system. So I'm going to unbox this thing. I'm going to do some full speed tests both in wired and wireless backhaul and range tests to see how far we can actually get both with my Wi-Fi 6 device which is my iPhone 13 Pro Max and with my Wi-Fi 6E device which is my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. I might also use my Pixel 6 Pro as well just to see some differences but usually Wi-Fi 6E devices are pretty similar to each other. Alright, so going ahead and unboxing this thing. Oh, I should also mention that this Eero, even though it is a router, it also supports Zigbee technologies and also Thread. So just as a heads up, it does a little bit more than a router. So taking a look at this thing, wow, this thing looks almost identical to the Eero Pro 6. I mean, with the bigger letters. So it's, it's actually good, it's bigger letters, but the size-wise, it looks pretty identical. And you do have two Ethernet ports, and this time around, you actually have a 2.5 gig Ethernet port and a gigabit here and then you have your USB-C which is the power so it's very very similar to the Eero Pro 6 except the Eero Pro 6 only supported up to gigabit speeds. Okay so this in this review I'm going to talk about just the Pro 6e and I'll do another video where I will compare it to the Pro 6. I'll also compare it to the Eero 6 Plus as well so smash that subscribe button so you guys know when all these videos come out. Alright so Download the app, unplug it. So this thing, honestly, these things are pretty easy to set up. You pretty much just get the app on your phone and you're good to go. And yeah, so let's see what's inside this thing. And there it is, okay. So two USB-C powered plugs. So Eero, I know with the Pro 6, I haven't read the instructions for this, but they do recommend using the power uh, with the power plug that they have rather than just another one. So again, USB-C powered, which is also really nice that they're using USB-C because that is a, you know, a standard. So I actually prefer that. Uh, and then we have a cable. It's either Cat5e or Cat6. It could even be Cat7. I'm not sure, but I'm sure it supports at least gigabit speeds. And we have the manuals. It's been a few days since I've unboxed these. I've been using as my main mesh system and so far so good. So no drops, nothing like that. And in that time, I had a chance to do all the speed tests, range tests. I have all those numbers here. Let's jump straight in. Starting with the internet speed test. So when you're doing an internet speed test, you're limited by your internet speeds, whatever your ISP, your internet service provider is providing you with. So in my case, my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. And notice I said megabits, not megabytes, because one byte is equal to eight bits. So that's the conversion rate. So when I do the speed test with my computer via ethernet, I always get those full speeds, no problem. However, Wi-Fi devices are another story. So using my iPhone Wi-Fi 6 device, and I actually used a combination of both my Pixel 6 Pro and my Galaxy S22 Ultra for the Wi-Fi 6C devices. However, their numbers were pretty similar to each other, so I just used the Galaxy numbers. Doing the speed test with the speed test app, I get some normal numbers with the Wi-Fi 6 device and better numbers with the Wi-Fi 6C device. So notice there was a drop, especially in the upload section. This is not really a full true test. It's a pretty common test. It's a good test, but it's not a full true test of what the router is capable of. So in order to do that, I actually have to get rid of my ISP and my, and not my, and the public speed test server from the equation. So what I do is I basically make my computer into a local speed test server. So essentially I go from phone to router, to computer, isolating the router, giving me incredible numbers. As you guys can see, huge improvement, especially in the upload speeds, and especially with the Wi-Fi 6E device. Now, this was in the case of a single router configuration, so just because you get a two-pack doesn't actually mean you need to use both. You could just use one, and that's the test that I did. Now, moving on, I go to wired backhaul. So wired backhaul, Essentially, you use two or more devices, and in my case, I have two. So what I do is, with the secondary one, I connect an Ethernet 
to the primary one and you can have a switch in between them so as long as there's an ethernet going from one to the other even through a switch that's totally fine so in this case with the wi-fi 6 device i pretty much got the same speeds however with the wi-fi 6c device you'll notice that i'm just under gigabit speeds and the reason for that is because this Eero has one two and a half gigabit port and one gigabit port. So when you're pretty much using one of the two and a half gigabit ports for access to the internet or to the server, well, you're only left with a gigabit port to access the other guy. So essentially what you're doing is it's going to work at two of the slower speeds. So even if I hooked up a gigabit port to a two and a half gigabit port, it's still gonna operate at a gigabit port. So that's why you could see there was a drop. So really the only way you could get those full speeds on the secondary one uh, on the Wi-Fi 6E devices, because they're faster than gigabit, is if they have multiple, in this case it would have two two and a half gigabit ports, very similar to what the ASUS ET12 Pro that I very recently reviewed. That one has two two and a half gigabit ports, that's why on the primary one and the secondary one, you pretty much get the same exact speeds, assuming your ethernet cable and your switch, if you put one in the middle, can actually handle those speeds. Okay. So that was a wired backhaul configuration. And if you guys are wondering, yes, these are both routers. However, in the same network, only the main one acts as the router. The secondary one always acts as, as Eero would call it, an extender, but other companies call it access points, nodes, and satellites. So however you want to use that uh, term. Okay, so the next one is wireless backhaul. Now wireless backhaul is very similar to wired backhaul. However, you remove the ethernet cable connecting these to each other. So if this guy's your main one hooked up to you know, your modem, well, in my case, the server, this would be the secondary one, which would be acting as the extender. And this one would basically be hooked up to power and it would wirelessly talk to this guy. Now, in my case, when I do the speed test, both in wired and the wireless backhaul, I'm actually doing the speed test from the secondary one to measure the speeds. So in this case, you see a drastic drop in speeds over wired backhaul, and that's because they're wirelessly talking to each other. Even with these speeds, there's still a lot of things you can do. And if you guys are wondering, in wireless backhaul, can you use the ethernet ports on the secondary device? And the answer is yes, yes you can. Now moving on to range tests, range varies based on location. So if you're in between floors, if you're in a building, if you have a lot of thick walls, if there's a lot of routers around you, all of that stuff is gonna hurt your range. So the more of an open area you're in, typically the better range that you will get. So I'm kind of a little bit more of an open area, not super open, but more on the open side than I used to be in the past. At 20 feet, very good numbers. At 50 feet, I'm outside, still getting pretty good numbers. Now, the interesting thing is that this actually went 320 feet away, which is very, very impressive. However, one thing that was odd about this is that right around 140 feet with the Wi-Fi 6 device, it really took a big hit. So it couldn't really connect to that 5 gigahertz band. It was connecting to the 2.4 gigahertz band, and it, it was it was struggling to connect to that. So the, the Wi-Fi 6C device, I guess, probably had a better antenna inside and it was still able to connect to it. That's why you see such a dramatic increase in speeds. Now jumping to the Eero app, this is one of those very simple to use interface apps that's available both on iOS and on Android. And you literally, you could be up and running in five to six steps. It is incredibly simple. It literally almost, it just tells you how to connect it and it says, pick your Wi-Fi name and you're good to go. Now something to keep in mind, if you're going from an old router to a new router to this new Eero for instance or any other router really, all you have to do, well one thing you can do is you can use the same Wi-Fi name and password, the same SSID and they are both case sensitive. Not just the password, the Wi-Fi name, the SSID is also case sensitive. If you do that, your devices should automatically connect to the new router that you're testing or using I should say. I I said testing because in my case, most of the time I'm switching these out because I'm testing them. If you want additional features like parental controls, well, they offer that. However, you do have to pay a subscription for it. So just something to keep in mind with this Eero. It's not expensive, but it would be nice if it was included. All right, now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, 
I've had the Eero Pro 6, not the 60, because I just got this one. But I've had the Eero Pro 6 since it came out, which is, I don't know how long it's been, like a year or something. But I've had it for a while, and I've used it probably on and off for about a few months. And it's been a very good system. Very stable, no drops, everything just works, no headaches. And I expect this to be no different. So, if you were going to do this in a wired backhaul setup, well, this thing is going to be amazing. If you're going to do it in a wireless backhaul setup, it should still be pretty good. But do notice that, of course, there was a drop in speeds on the secondary one. Uh, you know, it's not terrible or anything, and it should be better than a lot of dual band systems out there. But it is on the slower end of the tri bands because of its speed rating. Granted, it also costs a lot less. So I was going to say, you know, if I were to compare it to, let's just say, the ASUS CT12 Pro, well, that one gave better wireless backhaul numbers, but that one also cost way more than this. So. Uh, something to keep in mind and I always recommend if you guys can do this to use wired backhaul That's always going to give you very very good speeds uh, Even uh, pretty much on all the nodes. So with that I want to say I really like this thing I think for the price it gets you pretty good speeds and Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below as always Smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one